Scariest stories you've ever heard. The hand. Alex was the most unpopular student in medical school. It wasn't because he was mean or unkind or unfriendly. In fact, he was just the opposite. Most of the other students had to work hard and struggle to pass exams, not Alex. He always knew the right answer when called upon in lectures. He always could diagnose a patient's health problem. His lab work was always perfect. And that's why everyone hated Alex. The other medical students were jealous. It was as simple as that. Alex's reputation continued to grow. Over the long semesters of grueling study, the doctors and professors loved making Alex an example of how to do things right. Of course, this just made the other students resent him all the more. Finally, one of the students, Bart, could take it no longer. He called a meeting of some of his classmates. I'm sick and tired of hearing Alex this and Alex that, Bart said to his friends as they sat around the table. The room was dark except for a single light hanging low over the table. We've got to do something. Bart, you're just jealous, said Cindy, a young woman ranked high in the class. I'm getting good grades too. How do I know you won't turn against me next? Bart's right, Cindy, said Tom. It's one thing to get good grades like you do, but Alex is so perfect. It's, it's unnatural. It's as if he isn't human. Cindy giggled. Tom, you've been watching too many late night movies. It's not funny, said Bart. He makes me sick. You never see him anywhere but in class or the library or his dorm room. I don't even see him eat. He doesn't go to parties or do anything with other students. But you can't say he isn't friendly, countered Cindy. He always says hello. And I know he pointed out a mistake on your term paper, Tom, when you were studying beside him in the library. You needed a good grade and he was willing to help you. Yeah, but he shouldn't have been so happy to do it, said Tom. The group sat silent. The last of the four, sitting in silence until then, turned his face up into the light. We can find out if Alex is human and teach him a lesson too, said Derek. I have an idea. Big and tall, Derek had played football as an undergraduate and he was well known at the university. He was a leader. His size alone commanded respect. When he spoke, people listened. So now the group paid close attention as he told them his plan. Did you get it? whispered Tom outside the anatomy lab. Only the dim red light of the exit sign shone down in the darkened hall. Yeah, it's in here, said Bart, pointing to his athletic bag. Let's get out of here. Derek will be waiting for us. Inside the lab, a lone cadaver lay on the autopsy table. Its right arm, hidden under the sheet, ended at the wrist in a grisly stump. I can't believe you guys are going through with this, said Cindy. You're crazy, you know that. Derek ignored Cindy's comment. He smiled as he peeked into the bag. This is great. Alex is going to love this, he said to no one in particular. Bart and Tom patted each other on the back. You guys are really crazy, repeated Cindy. I don't want to know anything about this. I'm leaving. Oh, come on, Cindy. Don't be a spoil sport, said Tom. Cindy, it's not like the hand belongs to anybody, added Bart. I mean, the bodies we cut up are convicts who died in prison. Nobody claimed them. Who would want them? Cindy looked angry. It's not right, she said. I hope you guys get caught. She headed for the door. Cindy, barked Derek. Don't you ever say a word of this to anyone, you understand? She nodded, then slipped out the door. Derek smiled. Men were about to have a little fun. When the trio got to Alex's room, he was there as usual studying. Alex was surprised to see three of his classmates at his door. He rarely had visitors. Alex, we're having a real problem with Dr. King's assignment, said Bart. We know you could help us. Would you come to the study table downstairs? Alex didn't say anything at first. This request was truly unusual. Then Tom spoke up. Say yes, Alex. We really need your help. Okay, said Alex. A smile broke on his face. Just let me get my books. Downstairs, the group plopped down at the study table and spread out their books and papers. Alex immediately began explaining the assignment, but the guys only pretended to listen. After a few minutes, Derek excused himself. I just remembered I've got to call my girlfriend, he said. I'll be right back. Derek walked toward the telephone booth, then ducked into the restroom. Behind the door was the athletic bag, just where he had left it. He grabbed it and headed for the back stairs. When he reached Alex's floor, he peeked through the window in the stairwell door. The hall was empty. Walking deliberately, he made his way to Alex's room and pushed the door open. What a geek, thought Derek, noticing that Alex's room was perfection, too. The bed was made. Books were lined perfectly on their shelves. Not a sheet of paper was out of place. No pictures or posters decorated the wall. It's no wonder the guy has a private room, thought Derek. Nobody else could live like this. Opening the closet door, Derek pulled the string on the light in the dark enclosure. He wasn't surprised to find all Alex's clothes hanging perfectly, too. So far, all was going according to plan. Derek reached into the bag and pulled out the bloody hand, which he had wrapped in plastic. He put on a pair of surgical gloves and unwrapped the hand. In a few moments, he had tied the string of the closet light around the hand's wrist. Derek smiled to himself. I'd love to see the look on Alex's face when he grabs the hand to turn on the light, he thought. Packing up quickly, Derek closed the closet door. He checked the hallway, then slipped quietly back down the stairs to rejoin the study group. 
As he sat down, he gave everyone a thumbs up sign. Alex thought it meant that everything was okay with Derek's girlfriend, but Tom and Bart knew otherwise. The next morning, Tom, Bart, and Derek were waiting for Alex outside the lecture hall. They were laughing about their plot against Alex when Cindy walked up to them. Did you hot shots have your fun? She asked. They proceeded to tell her the whole story. It went like clockwork, said Derek as he finished the tale. We're waiting to see Alex's face now. I know one thing, said Cindy. I heard there's going to be an investigation at the anatomy lab. It seems the hand you guys snatched belonged to a notorious strangler. Some sicko newspaper reporter came in and wanted pictures of the guy's hands, and that's when they discovered one of the hands was missing. Derek laughed. They can't prove anything on us. In fact, they'll probably think Alex took it. This is even better. The bell rang. Alex was nowhere in sight. The students gave one last look down the hall and then found their seats in class. All day, the group watched to see when Alex would turn up, but he didn't appear. What made it especially strange was that Alex had never missed class before. That evening, Derek could stand the suspense no more. He called Bart on the phone. You get Tom and meet me at Alex's room in half an hour. This is getting weird. The three pranksters snickered like first graders when they knocked on Alex's door, but they quieted down when no one answered after the third and fourth knocks. He must be out, said Bart. Let's go. He sounded a little nervous. Derek turned the doorknob. The door swung open. Let's see if the hand is still there, he said. The three crept over toward the closet. The door was slightly ajar. Pulling it open, the boys gasped in pure horror. The hand still hung from the string, but now its muscles were strained in a death grip. Clenched tightly within its massive fingers was Alex's whitened throat. Limp and lifeless, his body swayed before them in the strangler's cruel caress. Have a spooky day.